walls with high forces usually have boundary elements at the end. Walls are the little load resisting elements in the structure. So they mostly resist the wind load and the seismic load coming onto it. So let's take an example of this wall, which is let's say going for from the start of the uh, bottom of the story to the top, and it is resisting the seismic force coming from at multiple levels. Now, what exactly happens if the forces are higher? The shear walls that we are having will have more forces at the end, and there will be more concentration of the forces. But how exactly does that happen? And how do we decide the size of the boundary element? What should be the length of the boundary element at the corner? So typically. What sort of forces do we get in a shear wall? The forces that we usually have in a shear wall is the vertical axial load that you have. You also have high little force coming onto it uh, from the seismic or wind action. Also, you have a moment developing it because of this horizontal moment that you are getting. And let's say let's take an example of this particular wall which is having a length L and the thickness T. What should of what would be the forces that will be developing in that particular wall? Further, how do we decide what should be the length of the boundary element? So, for a typical force P and the moment that you are having, it will develop an axial stress of this record. For P, it will have a compressive stress developing, which will be of P by A. Similarly, for moments, it will have a compressive and the tensile stress both. One side will be having a uh, tensile stress depending on uh, the, the direction of the moment. So let's say one side will be having M by Z positive compressive stress and the one side will be having the negative compressive stress which is M by Z. Z over here is, would be the section modulus of this particular wall and which will be given by nothing but T which is the thickness of the wall times L square which, because that is the depth it is ha uh, helping to resist that moment and that divided by 6 which will be the overall bending moment or bending uh, modulus which is helping to resist the moment. Now if I combine these two and just work out the stresses that we usually get. So the stresses will be something like this. It will be on one end. It will be P by A plus M by Z which is coming from the bending stresses and then here it will be P by A minus M by Z. Now if you just look closely this particular stress was completely compressive in nature completely positive and the, this one was actually uh, somewhat negative and positive both compression and tension boots so overall if we look at the this particular portion of the member or the wall is actually having the tension and that would be the length of boundary element so here from this you need to work out the length of the boundary element so length of the boundary element will be given by lb which is the length of that particular portion divided by minus b divided by this the ratio should be equal to p by a plus m by z and P by A minus M by Z. Once you work out the length of the boundary element from this particular equation, you will be left with whatever the tension zone is going to be. So that's what will give you the length of the boundary element. Once you have the length of the boundary element, that is going to be your tension zone. So let's say this is the typical length of the shear wall that you have, which is L. And up out of that, the rest will be, this particular part will be having the length of the boundary element, which will be the 10, tensile zone. Similarly, when the moment is up coming from that direction or when the reversal loading is happening because that could happen in both wind and seismic cases, then the same this part of the portion will come into the tension and this will be the length of the boundary element that you need to have. Now, how much is the reinforcement that you need to give that will be decided by the area of this triangle that, that you are having. So area of that, this particular triangle will be given by 1 by LB, which is the length of the boundary element times the stress tensile stress that is developing which is p by a minus m by z this will give you the area of this particular angle and that reinforcement you need to put in this particular length and design the boundary element so that's how you basically check the length of the boundary element that you need at times when the stresses are higher you tend to provide the thicker boundary elements and the rest of the wall can be thinner as compared to that so this was the one small uh, point which I wanted to highlight on uh, boundary elements. Hope you found the video helpful. Uh, put your questions if you have anything in the comments uh, and like and subscribe for more.